Hello, AP 12 students. This is Mr. Chan, and today is lesson number two in uh, the lessons that we had missed because of COVID-19. And so today's lesson is just a follow-up on what we had learned about hybridization. So if I share the screen, okay. Recall last day when we were talking about hybridization, okay, we talked about how the or atomic orbitals, the S and P, which merge into a unique set of hybridized orbitals like the sp3, okay? And this allowed for the electrons from one atom to be broken apart so that they are able to bond with electrons from another atom, okay? Now, using this idea, so how would the idea of double bonds work? using this valence bond theory or hybridization. And that's what I want to talk about today. Okay, so using hybridization and valence bond theory, we can now understand how double bonds and triple bonds can occur. Now, so for example, C2H4, okay? For C2H4, oh, come on pen, there we go it would look something like this if we were to draw the Lewis dot structures. Now, remember when we were determining the shape, we said back when we were doing Lewis dot structures, the double bond here, you pretended that there was only a single bond. So it would look something like this when we were determining the shape. Okay, and remember here was we determined, we imagined that it was a single bond. Okay. Now, so in the notes here it says, since the orientation around each carbon is like three electron pairs, Recall double bonds is treated like a single bond for shape determination. The shape around the carbon is trigonal planar. And so it needs a sp2 hybridization. So again, remember when we talked about shapes, we focused on the bond. So we had one, two, and three. So that's why it was trigonal planar. So you would have sp2. But in this case, you go, okay, it's sp2. I understand that. But what's going on with this? So what happens when we have this orbital? Okay. What's the significance? So here we have three electrons in the sp2 hybridization. One, two, three. So that leaves one electron in the atomic p orbital. So if we were to look at it in a diagram, this would be sp2, sp2, sp2. And the one in purple here, that would be your p, the electrons in the p orbital. Okay, so how does that work? So according to the valence bond theories, there's a direct overlap between the atomic orbitals and the hybrid orbitals to form a bond. The bond formed from this overlap is called a sigma bond, okay? Now, the sigma bond results from a direct overlap and this sigma bond is the idea of your single bond. So notice right now, if you take a look at this particular diagram for C2H4, there is a direct overlap here, direct overlap here, direct overlap here, direct overlap here, 
Those are all sigma bonds, and there's a direct overlap of orbitals here as well. Okay? Now, but what about the p orbital? What about this one right here? Okay? Now, there's also an indirect overlap from the, whoopsie, there's an indirect overlap from the unhybridized or atomic p orbitals. This indirect overlap forms the second bond between the carbons. And this is what we call the pi bond. So what you have is you could have the electrons. Remember we said up here, there's this electron here in this p orbital. So what happens is you have one electron on this carbon, one electron on this carbon, and what happens is that it creates an indirect overlap. Now, it could be, the electrons could be both on top, or the overlap could be when the electrons are both on the bottom. It's one or the other. So this indirect overlap is what we would call our pi bond, okay? And this results in our second bond, okay? Between the two carbons. So you have, well, oh, my pen's not working. Now, because the electrons are constantly moving, this indirect overlap can be found above or below the pi bond but is still considered one pi bond. So it could be above or below, but let me just highlight this. Hopefully my pen's working, yes. This indirect overlap can be found above or below the, pi bo the sigma bond, but is still considered one pi bond, okay? Now, so if we were to take a look at this, I think I have a little thing here. Come on, where is it? Where is it? Ah, C2H4, right here. Okay. So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to stop the sharing. And then I'm going to reshare. So what you have is you have your pi, bond, your pi and your sigma bonds. So the pi bond is the red and blue or red and red. So you notice red and blue, red and red. Those are the sigma bonds. The pi bonds is the indirect overlap here that you see in yellow. Notice it could be above or below the two carbons, okay? And that's the reason being for that is because the electrons are constantly moving. So they can form a bond above or they can form an indirect bond below. So that would be CH4, okay? So let me close this off, okay? Now, what about, let me get back here. What about C2H2? Okay, for triple bonds, orientation is like two pairs. The shape is linear, so you need the sp hybridization around the central atom. So here, the, since the shape is linear, it's sp hybridization, okay? So for example, let's say we had our Lewis dot structure here, okay? So we have H, C, triple bond, C, H. Remember the shape of it would be, remember these three bonds merge into one, okay? So what you have is again, you have these two, which are hybridized, for sigma bonds. And what you're left with is these two, 
are the atomic orbitals. for the pi bond. Notice the other car, it says the left carbon and notice the right carbon is set up exactly the same. Okay, so again what you have is you have your hybridized here which is I highlighted in blue and you have your atomic which I'm circling in red. Okay, so if you look at the diagram, what you have is you have direct overlap here in blue, blue, and blue. And what you have here is in red, you have the pi bonds, either two above or two below. Now, how would that look? Would be something like this. So I'm gonna get this going, okay? And I'm just going to stop the sharing, share the screen. And so what you have here is you have in the red or the red and blue, that would be the um, sigma, uh, sigma bonds. And then you notice the indirect above, below, or side to side in yellow, those would be the indirect overlap of the p orbitals that creates the pi bonds, okay? So this would be a triple bond because the triple bond between the carbon, you would have one sigma and then you would have two pi, okay? Remember, above and below is one pi, left and right is the other pi, okay? Okay, now, let me just get this here. Whoopsie. Using hybridization and the idea of sigma and pi bonds, we have some idea of why resonance structures occur. Now remember, resonance structure is when the electrons, uh, there's more than one way to draw uh, a structure because the double bond is moving. Remember, we had talked about this. And the reason is this, the pi bond interactions do not necessarily stay between two atoms. Instead, the interaction can be shifted between atoms. This is called delocalization, okay? So instead, the pi bonds interaction can be shifted between two atoms, called delocalization. If two or more resonance structure molecules can be drawn, then what theoretically occurs is midway between them, called the resonance hybrid, okay? Now, a classic example of a resonance hybrid would be benzene. Benzene is C6H6, and what it is drawn in is a six carbon ring. Now, when I draw it here, notice I have the pi bond here. I have a pi bond here and a pi bond up front. Now, what's to say, why can't I would draw a pi bond, I'm gonna highlight it in blue, between these two? Couldn't I put the pi bond here? Could I not put the pi bond in between these two? Or a pi bond here between these two? Okay, so because the electrons are moving, and what happens is the pi bonds can be formed between the different carbons. As we can see here, what happens is most commonly when you do the benzene ring, you are just drawing six carbons. So here, one, two, three, four, five, six. And this ring represents the moving double bond. So that is the classic idea of resonance hybrid. Okay. Later on when you're doing biology 12, you're talking about aromatics and organic chemistry, you'll see the benzene ring and you can understand why they draw it as a circle. All right. Now 
what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a quick example of a typical question you would see. Now, this is in your Zoom doll. I got this from the ninth edition, okay? And so I'm just going to go over what we have here. Now, so a typical question would be, how many carbons are sp3 hybridized? Now, what do I mean by sp3 hybridized? Means that there are four bonds attached. So here, it'd be one, two, three, four, five, and six. There's actually six here. Now, why is it six? Is because of the fact that here, for the CH3 up here, we need to break it down into C, H, H, H. So that was a little trickier. Okay. Now, how many are sp2 hybridized? sp2 means that there are the shape of trigonal planar. So in this case, it would be carbon, it would be one, two, three, and four. Remember here, the double bonds are treated as one. Okay. And which atom is sp hybridized? In this case, you're looking for linear. And so as a result, this would be linear. So that would be the nitrogen. Now, how many sigma bonds are in the molecule? You would count like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, whew, 19, 20, 21, 22, uh, I think 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Did I miss any? Probably. So let's say about 30-ish. Okay. So this is the idea of how the typical example would go. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So I'll let you figure out numbers E, F, G, and so on. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, you bring it to class and let me know. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. And hopefully this clarifies a little bit of um, what's going on with bonding using valence bond theory and hybridization. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.